The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Aragon LQ Pre-Harvest Weed Control, and Fortenza Vibrance Max Plus Saltro. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture. As part of this Soybean School episode, we are focusing on weed control in a dry year in soybeans. What have we learned from this year? How does Group 2 stewardship fit into this discussion? We're joined by Jeanette Gauthier, Technical Service Specialist with BASF. So we're here in Winkler at our research and development farm uh, where the soil is uh, particularly light. You can have a look at it after. Um, and we haven't got a lot of rain, so it's pretty typical of the season here. And despite that, I would say that our soybeans are looking pretty good. So the plot I'm standing in is actually an example of uh, BSF's advanced weed control. So that's our two pass system in soybeans. And so aside from being quite clean, the soybeans are looking really good um, despite that drought, the droughty conditions. So even when we compare it to other plots of competitive products, say glyphosate followed by glyphosate, or um, you know, skipping that pre-emerge application and going with Viper only, you know, we can definitely see that these soybeans look really good. So probably still worth the money investing in some decent weed control in a dry year. There is still that <laughs> competition for that moisture in the ground, of course. There is, and so, um, I think it was a challenging decision this year, you know, whether to even go in with that pre-emergent. It was so dry, it didn't seem like the weeds were coming up, but we can definitely see the differences here. So sometimes even though you don't see it, it's definitely there and it just helps you time that in-crop application a little bit better as well. Okay, so would you go in with a, a residual product in, in soybeans now? So in we've actually moved to less residual products and that's specifically for Western Canada. And I know we alluded to having a drought, but it's really because the prairies are very unique um, compared to say Eastern Canada. And so a lot of the products we've developed and launched for soybeans um, are really a good fit for Western Canada. So one example I can talk about is say Viper. Um, we have other group two ME chemistries. Um, you know, we've kind of moved along different active ingredients. And this is one that we find works really well in Roundup Ready soybeans. Um, it does still have, it's got two modes of action. So it's, you know, we've got that multiple modes of effective action uh, for, for resistance management. And then we're also looking at a group two that has a little bit less residual. And so while that might be a catch 22, sometimes we think for flushing weeds, you know, if we do have that two pass program, then we have set ourselves up well, looking forward into other years. Um, you know, we have a pretty wide open recrop. Are, are there still considerations though with that system in a dry year? It is a really good question. And I would say um, generally, you know, we do test under prairie conditions, but the last few years have been really dry. And this year, I think across a large part of the West, we are looking at really dry conditions, very dry. And so group two chemistry, it is probably a good idea to review um, what group twos have been used throughout a rotation. Um, so at BASF, we do have some sustainability guidelines around group two use. Um, and those include using only one application of a group two in a field per year, and then looking to max out at two applications of a group two herbicide in four years. And the reason for this is twofold. Again, if we go back to that resistance management, we wanna make sure that we are adding in different modes of action on our target weeds so that we are lowering the risk of developing that uh, resistance to really important group two herbicides. Um, but then also looking at the conditions we have, um, you know, when we're really dry, there's the moisture isn't there to drive uh, microbial or chemical breakdown of uh, group two herbicide products in the soil. And so uh, group twos, while they're all slightly different chemistries, you know, their residues do have the same uh, or can build and, and work the same on follow crops. And so it'll be really important then to assess um, or, you know, limiting yourself to those guidelines 
leaves you a little bit more open when you're looking at follow crops in a dry year. Yeah, this isn't just about weed control and soybeans, it's about other crops in the rotation as well. Absolutely, and it, it's not even our BASF products, it's kind of a, you know, across the board stewardship messaging. Um, so other product labels might have specific recommendations on the label uh, with respect to conditions or soil types um, with specific recropping. Um, but then there's also considerations that, you know, this is a really dry year and what has my group to herbicide use been. Mm -hmm. So looking ahead then uh, to next growing season, what are some things that growers should keep in mind when it comes to uh, planting their weed control in, in soybeans and, and how this ties in with the entire crop rotation? So it's looking at those, those group two herbicides like we talked about, how their use throughout the past, you know, three years might impact your choice for next year, your crop choice. But it's not just group twos. Um, there's definitely other products that we use here on the prairies um, that have some residual and can have the same type of label claims, for example, or, or concerns with low rainfall. And so for soybeans specifically, um, there are some group four products, for example, that we might wanna go back look to see what we used in, in you know wheat or canola this year and decide if soybeans are the best crop to go on that field next year or if maybe you should shuffle things around and it's it's true for soybeans and then i think moving forward you know conditions can change if we do see that moisture um, later in the fall, we usually recommend using your rainfall data from the time of your in-crop or, you know, if you're looking further back, whenever you made your application of that particular herbicide to about September 1st, just because once we get beyond September 1st, even if the rain falls, doesn't mean that we necessarily have the temperature or the conditions for breakdown. So just keeping those in mind, um, you know, I think too, coming from a dry year, not all soybean fields, you know, we've had thinner stands, weeds definitely come through. So if we are using something as a pre-harvest or a post-harvest, also taking a look at those labels and making sure that we're keeping that in mind for our cropping choices next year. All right. Lots of good information again, Jeanette. Thank you. Thank you.